Globally, agriculture takes up over 35% of the terrestrial surface of the globe and is a huge driver of um, biodiversity loss. So everything we do to clear land and grow food has consequences for biodiversity. But we often forget about the fact that agricultural landscapes can also be really important places for biodiversity. They house all sorts of different insect species, um, fungi, bacteria in the soil, birds. But we often don't have as good data or information about that biodiversity, given the fact that this is often private land. Farmers don't have the capacity to monitor that biodiversity. Hi, I'm Matt Mitchell. I'm a research associate in the Faculty of Land and Food Systems at UBC. So my research focuses on understanding how to better manage human-dominated landscapes, like agricultural or urban landscapes, for people and nature. Um, so I work on understanding how the structure of those landscapes, where the different forests, fields, buildings, roads are, how that impacts both the species that are in that um, landscape, um, all of the biodiversity that's there, but also how that impacts the benefits that people receive from ecosystems. So things like um, places to recreate, climate regulation, clean water, all of those sorts of benefits. So we're standing here at the UBC farm uh, on the southern part of the UBC Point Grey campus. We're on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. Um, the farm is an, a pretty amazing multifunctional space, 24 hectares in size, with half of it um, dedicated to production, to food production. The other half is second growth forest. Uh, and this space is, is really, it's a place of learning, of education, of research. We have a number of research projects that happen here. Um, but also a place of, of community um, and outreach and all of the things that happen with um, growing food, selling it at markets, and, and connecting with the people around us as well. So the really amazing thing about uh, biodiversity monitoring right now is the amazing technologies that everyone can have on their phone that will allow them to understand better what species are around them. iNaturalist is one of these. This is a citizen science app that basically brings together people through their phones to be able to take photos of species or things they see out, out in nature and work together to identify them. We use that at the farm. When we see new species that we don't know, it helps us um, identify some of those. We also have um, done some bio blitzes at the farm where we um, have students and the public come to the farm and um, use iNaturalist to document what species we see around the farm. The other app that we use a lot, uh, both in a course I teach, but also just you know, in our biodiversity monitoring is called Merlin. It's a bird identification app, uh, and it, it allows you to identify birds both from putting in characteristics of the birds, but it also just recently added a feature where it will just listen for bird calls and in real time can identify those bird species that are around you. The other initiative that uh, the biodiversity monitoring here at the farm is connected to is uh, the Light Farm software, an app that's being developed in the Faculty of Land and Food Systems led by Hannah Whitman. It's primarily an, an app that allows farmers to manage you know, all of the management data at their farm. It's also being linked to biodiversity data, so allowing farmers to Co collect their own biodiversity data through iNaturalist and contribute it um, that way, but also pull data from iNaturalist from large global databases of biodiversity, giving some control to the producers and farmers about being able to use this biodiversity data that's often collected by scientists but is not as accessible, allowing them to use that data in ways that they can better manage um, their fields. This work, understanding biodiversity in agricultural landscapes, really is connected to a lot of work that's going, around, going on around the world. Um, there's an increasing realization of the importance of these landscapes for biodiversity and the fact that a lot of the species that inhabit agricultural landscapes are threatened. Uh, and so understanding those species is really important in these landscapes. Um, there's a, a global initiative called GeoBon, which is a, a global biodiversity observation network. And so there's also an initiative of creating a Canadian biodiversity observational network. Uh, and so researchers here at the farm and in land and food systems are um, involved in that and making sure that that biodiversity network uh, also includes agricultural landscapes and that we monitor 
the, all of the different species, um, both positive and negative in these landscapes, um, to understand at a national scale um, what biodiversity we have and, and how it's changing.